Welcome to this episode of Hands On. Uh, today I'll be reviewing the Onyx Books Poke to Colour um, on its own as opposed to a comparison. It's a ridiculous name. It's very, very long. Uh, I understand, you know, it's the colour version of the Onyx Books Poke 2, but uh, they could have gone with something a little bit more elegant. Um, so, first thing I want to talk about, obviously, the most important thing is the fact that it's a colour screen. Um, and I'm going to go through all of the negatives first, and then give you the positives. Now, don't worry, stick around for the positives. It's not all bad, but colour e-ink is... Um, it's been around for a while, there have been different variations of it, and it's always had its problems, so it's important to know what the negatives are before you invest in a colour e-ink display so that you won't be disappointed. Um, the first thing to note is that uh, if you look, for example, here, and um, less, less so here, you can see that it's a very jagged line, and this is especially apparent with um, vertical lines because of the way that the color, um, the color filter, is sort of hexagonal, so it's offset with each row. So it's like this and this and this and this. So it doesn't quite match up with the the black and white pixels, which means that often you get uh, this sort of jagged line at the edge of uh, color images but you do you do get used to it and in software they do sort of um, they get around it they make it look better they sort of black out the edges so that you can't really see now first negative is it's got a very slow power on so there we go I'm turning it on now and uh, this is why I usually put it in standby mode rather than turn it off because if I want to quickly read with it it just takes a very long time to turn on. Um, so while it's loading, we'll go over the most obvious uh, downside, I find, is the fact that it's a small screen. A lot of people, when they want to buy a color e-reader, they want it for, for reading comics, and reading comics on a small screen isn't that great. We'll get to it in the uh, next section where we do the positives. It's not as big a problem as you would expect because of the um, fast processor. It's a very fast device. Now, um, color e-ink is and has always been darker than black and white e-ink. I have here, for comparison, a Kindle Paperwhite. I think it's the first or second edition of the Paperwhite. And um, you can see there that the whites are whiter. <laughs> uh, quite simply, yeah. Um, Funnily enough, I haven't found this to be as big of a problem as I thought it would be. First of all, if you're reading it in bright light, then it is still readable. And um, secondly, it comes with a front light. That does, however, lead to our next negative in that you often have to keep the front light on. And when you do, it does counteract sort of this discoloration. Um, the best way I can describe it is it's not quite sort of grey. It's more uh, sort of a chartreuse discoloration so it's slightly yellowish green in tint not quite sure why that is um, another comparison um, and if you stick around and subscribe I will get to this later and do a full comparison but here for example is the old jet book color and it has more of a sort of white gray tone to it it doesn't really have this sort of chartreuse discoloration so the whites on the Jetbook color are somewhat better because they're they're not discolored. They are they are just grey. Um, again, colour ink is a little darker. Now, as I said, stick around, subscribe, and I will be doing a comparison between the old e ink and the newest generation. Um, yeah, so keeping the front light on obviously drains the battery quicker than an e reader, which in a way defeats the point of an e reader, but it's still more efficient than an LCD display and it's still nicer for the eyes even with the front light on and I use this device very heavily I really like it and I can still do four or five days on one charge with the front light on full blast so it's really not that bad um, it's still better still better than an LCD display um, give me a second oh. Uh, need a drink, right. 
Yeah, so another downside is that the colours, they are brighter than the old style of uh, e-ink, of colour e-ink, the Jetbook colour for example, but they are still paler than, than a print page. I've got this under a very strong light so that you can you can see. I can also put the front light on which will increase sort of colour perception but also sometimes washes it out a little bit. But the colours the colour colours aren't terrible, but they are definitely not as bright as an L C D display, of course, or even a, a printed colour page. So um that's just something you you have to accept and you have to live with. But it's still colour and it's it's still enjoyable to have it. However, the biggest complaints I have about the um the poke to color they're all missing features they're all things that they could have added in but they didn't and it's not quite clear why um, one of the most annoying ones is the lack of any buttons so there's no back button there's no home button there's no volume controls all of these have um, all of the controls are done using this navigation ball which clutters up the screen a little bit, but you, you click on it. You click on it, and then um, this menu comes up, and you can customize the menu. So, for example, the back button is here for me on mine. This is the screen refresh. Um, yes, yes, I agree to your blah, 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 privacy policy. Um, hold on, let me just check. I'll try and get the contrast to look a little bit better on the screen. Right. There we go. I've turned off the front light and it shows up better on camera. Brilliant. So, yeah, so as you can see here, I've got back button, refresh. These are contrast options. This is the multitasking. Uh, this is to change speed mode, which I'll get to later. And this is um, up and down navigation buttons. Um, yeah, it's basically the page turn buttons. All virtual because there are, there are no buttons. and. The lack of buttons can be a little bit annoying. It's a bit annoying, for example, that I have to press here and then press back in order to go back. So I'd much rather just have a little button at the bottom that does all of my back actions for me. Uh, this could have been resolved the way they do it with other books devices, which is with gesture, gesture support. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason, they don't include gesture, gesture. Why am I struggling with that word? Gesture support. Um, on the poke to color. I don't know why it would make navigating with it so much easier, but it's simply not there. Um, I've tried asking books about it and I think it's quite clear that they're, they're not going to include gesture support and I don't know why. Uh, so another missing feature is the, um, the lack of speakers or a headphone jack. You can connect a Bluetooth speaker to it, but as I, I've tried to use this as my my main device because I'm not a fan of, of LCD or OLED screens. Uh, I'm the kind of person who uses e-ink because uh, I find that my, I get eye strain from, from normal style screens. And I'd love to use this more extensively, but the lack of a speaker means that I can't use it for everything that I'd like to. And obviously I'm not going to carry around a Bluetooth speaker with me everywhere. Could carry Bluetooth headphones, of course. So if um, if you're the kind of person who would be carrying Bluetooth headphones anyway, then it, it doesn't matter so much. But I like to watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos or Audible in the background, and I like to just leave my phone sitting there playing while I do other stuff in the room. So uh, I can't do that with, with this device because of the lack of a speaker or headphone jack or anything like that. Um, Another missing feature is no SD card, and um, this isn't necessarily a books problem. There's most, I'd say, e-reader manufacturers currently don't include SD card ports with their devices. It's a, a move that they've been um, a trend that they've been moving to for, for quite some time now to remove the SD card port. It does have a fair bit of internal storage. Um, I believe it's 32 gigabytes, and so it's it's not the worst thing in the world. You still have place for all of your books and everything that you need. But again, as you would be using this for reading um, 
comic books most likely, then perhaps, perhaps you will run out of space eventually. Um, another missing feature is, so this is the library, um, the library for their, their built-in uh, reading app, which is called Neo Reader. And when you download books, they don't automatically end up in your library. You have to go to storage, you have to locate the book, and then open it. And then once you've opened it in Neo Reader, then it will finally be in your library, which uh, is a bit annoying. Uh, don't know how they'd solve that. Surely they, they must have some way of automatically finding files that you've downloaded in your download folder and just add them. Um, Adobe does that if you open uh, the Adobe app. It already knows where all of your files are, and you can just open them from there. Uh, but Neo Reader doesn't do that. Um, another missing feature is the lack of any warm light. The only thing they have on here is what they call a moonlight, which is the uh, bluish, whitish LED. Um, and that's a that's a feature. I'm not sure why they would be, would be missing. It's um, it's a common problem that. There's a bit of discoloration in the um, color e-ink displays, and it would be nice to sort of adjust the balance, um, adjust the white balance to to get it just right. When you when you put on this uh, moonlight, you do get a slight bluish tint discoloring it, and that's not particularly enjoyable, especially when you're trying to read a comic and um, everything is a little bit washed out because it's got this sort of blue tint to it. Whereas if you had a warm light. You could counteract that, so it's it's baffling that they would leave that out. It would seem like a really, really important feature to add for color e-ink. So I do hope that future devices have the ability to change the white balance because that would be a, a feature that would be very important for color e-ink. Um, again, on the whole white balance front, if uh, if I open up a comic. There's there's no way to to adjust the color saturation or the gamma. Uh, if you have the the other color e-reader, the Pocketbook Color, it has quite a lot of options in its built-in reader to um, adjust the gamma and adjust the saturation. So you can brighten the image, you can make it more colorful. Whereas this just has one option. It just has as you see it, and you can adjust the contrast up and down, which changes the color slightly. It can make it brighter or darker, but it doesn't really make it pop the way that uh, bumping the saturation all the way up on the pocketbook color does. So if you are getting uh, an e-reader and you just want it to read comics, then you might want to reconsider getting the Onyx Books Poke 2 Color, as it is. <laughs> that stupid name. Uh, yeah, um, you might want to reconsider, but the amount of features that this has at the pocketbook doesn't have means that I'm gonna hold on to this one and get rid of the pocketbook simply because it's more flexible even though there is that slight drawback. Um, we're not quite to the end of the negatives yet but we're, we're almost there so um, the settings is also a negative but that's a negative for all books products. First of all there's not as many settings as on a standard Android device and they're really badly organized. You have these these sort of nine uh, settings panels and th th you know you've just got here more settings is just a bunch of random stuff that's left over. You you go to application settings and um, there's stuff thrown in here that has nothing to do with applications like debugging mode that's not anything to do with applications. The bookstore um, power settings are reasonably limited um, and no screen settings absolutely no screen settings um, which is another complaint that I have is that this OS and their Neo Reader app are not made with color in mind they, they haven't bothered to optimize any of their software any of their software for color. So here's Neo Reader, for example. If you if you highlighted something in the uh, pocketbook color, it would highlight it in color. It would be like highlighting it with a uh, colored highlighter. But here in the Neo Reader app, you've got black or gray. Those are your only options. So 
it doesn't implement the color features of this device at all and uh, yeah same again with the settings absolutely no display options you can't you can't adjust any any of the saturation options or anything the only thing you can adjust is up here you've got the panel with uh, here contrast you can adjust the contrast and uh, that's that's uh, that's it um, another complaint I have is that the the touch screen isn't very responsive I often have to click it twice or, or hold down quite a while or press harder to, to make it react and I'm not sure why it is when I'm typing on here it seems to work pretty fine but just general browsing and clicking on stuff it just it's really unresponsive and I've no idea why that would be why why the screen would be so unresponsive and again there's there's no settings to to change that if you have a Samsung device you can um, you can for example activate gloved mode where it it responds to touch much much easier because obviously if you're wearing gloves um, if you're wearing gloves then it's it's harder for it to recognize your finger so it's possible it's always possible in Android to, to adjust these settings and yet again books does not give you any option to do so so you just end up with a very unresponsive touch screen which uh, at times can be difficult and frustrating to navigate if you're reading a book for example you tap it and nothing happens you tap it again nothing happens and you have to tap it a few times before it um, before it changes or you just get used to it and you hold for longer and you tap harder which is something I wouldn't want to do with an e-ink screen they're very fragile devices and you, you don't want to be hitting them hard enough to crack them so yeah that's uh is that a hardware problem is that a software problem have they calibrated it wrong or are the touch screens that they use for this not very good i'm not sure and um i haven't really got an answer from books either so books are a uh, chinese company and if you're in the west chinese companies have quite bad customer service generally um, if the device breaks you can have to send it back to China or Russia I believe is their their Western um, <clears throat> is their Western repair center and um, yeah they've got a feedback system in here but for some reason it's deleted my feedback but I've I've submitted feedback in the past and they've they've given very rude answers so that is another negative is that um, books has not the best customer service and an example of this is so you can adjust the speed mode on books devices you can go from normal mode which is you know it refreshes very often to speed mode where there's quite a bit of a little bit of ghosting actually it's not that bad it's not bad at all I'll show you here speed mode um, yeah which makes it scroll a lot faster and there's a teeny weeny bit of ghosting but it's it's really not enough to even notice most of the time actually it's very very good uh, and then you have the A2 mode and A2 mode is the one that everybody loves it's there's quite a bit of ghosting as you can possibly see I hope so but it's uh, much much faster so it's great for scrolling the web or anything I tend to stick to speed mode because the image degradation is very very minimal with speed mode so um yeah i use it most of the time because you hardly notice the difference between it and the normal mode except that it's uh, quite a bit faster so it's great for browsing the web which obviously you can do with this because it's a, a standard android device there you go here you go so this is uh which mode is this a2 mode i think yeah this is a2 mode and you can see some very heavy heavy ghosting here um now Books devices also come with a mode called X mode, which was designed for watching uh, videos. And it works. It's, it's a very, very fast mode. It degrades the quality of the image quite a bit, but um, they've removed it. So if you take a black and white device from books, you can, you can go in here and you can click on X mode. And if you have a um, poke to color, one of these, you can go on X mode as long as you don't update the firmware because they just completely unannounced and out of the blue removed X mode without exclamation without exclamation without 
explanation. Um, and yeah, so the, the X mode, when you used it, it, it sort of stopped giving you color. It turned it into a black and white e-reader, which obviously makes it quicker, I assume, because you're not having to process the colors as well as the black and white layer. And it was good, it worked, and I quite enjoyed using it for watching YouTube videos. And then one day, updated the firmware, and it was gone. And I messaged books and said, hey, I'd, I'd like X mode back. Where is it gone? Have I got a fault? And they go, oh, no, no, we removed it. Well, can I have it back? No. So, yeah, um, again, not the best customer service. Um, they probably removed it because it turns it black and white, and maybe they thought people would complain about that, but that's not really their decision to make. If it's my device and I don't like X mode, I don't have to use it, but you shouldn't take that option away from me. Um, so yeah, don't expect the best customer service from books and um, be careful about updating your firmware in case they randomly take um, system functions away from you. Sadly, our woes do not end with the device itself. I've gone and gotten here the um, Onyx Books Remoter, which is a remote control device for controlling Onyx Books e-readers, including the Poke 2, so presumably also the Poke 2 Color. It doesn't bloody work. So, you can use it to, to navigate menus, and that works fine. However, there we go, see? Scrolling from side to side, we click on stuff. However, half of the buttons don't do anything. So, here's the menu button. It doesn't do anything in this um, menu, but if you open open a book, then at the very least it opens the menu here. The back button works. Would you like to exit near reader? But then the navigation doesn't work to select yes or no. So that's bloody useless. Uh, the refresh button works. But then we have the backlight button that also works. But then, sorry, front light button. But then we go to screenshot. Nothing happens. Let's let's open a book. There's a, I've heard that it's supposed to work with Neo Reader. Nothing bloody happens. Now, contrast button. Nothing happens. So, not only is the device itself problematic, its interaction with uh, books. Uh, accessories is also problematic. The uh, second accessory problem is the case itself. It is a glue-on case. It has two strips of sticky, sticky back uh, tape, sticky back ta tape that you use to glue the case to the device. No one in the history of devices has ever gone. Do you know what I want? I want a sticky back case. I want a case that has absolutely no brackets to protect the corners of my device. It's uncomfortable to hold because it digs into my fingers. No one wants that. Nobody wants a sticky back case. No one. No one ever. If you, if you want one, you're an alien. You're not a real person. You are you are an alien or you've, you're a paid shill. No one wants a sticky back case. The The Note, the book's note Air came with a sticky back case and the customer backlash was so strong that they finally brought out a normal case for it. Now, the uh, the Note 2 shares a body, uh, sorry, book's Poke 2 colour, shares a body, <laughs> shares a body with the Poke 2 and the Poke 3. So their cases fit this, but this is the only case available for them! bloody sticky back thing. Now, this causes incompatibility with the third uh, product from from books, which is an accessory, and that is this here, the books e-reader stand. Now, normally what you do is take your device out of the case and put it in the stand. Well, you can't bloody do that because it's stuck to it. Anyway, that's it for the negatives. <laughs> <sighs>
despite the negatives, there are a lot of positives to this device, and um, they outweigh the negatives by some bizarre turn of events. This device has become my, my daily driver, as it were. It is my daily e-reader. It replaces all my other e-readers, uh, unless I'm reading large PDFs on my Max 3 or my Hisense Q5. So why has it become my, my main e-reader despite having so many flaws? Well, first of all, it's a bloody colour e-reader. We've been waiting for colour for over 10 years now. Um, the only device with the previous generation of colour that came out was the Jetbook colour. And um, I believe there was, what was it, was it Pocketbook colour Lux or something? Anyway, uh, it was an awful underpowered device with so little RAM that you couldn't do anything with it. That's all we ever got. Um, and we finally have a colour device. And it's Android. Yeah, so that's the reason why, why this is such an awesome device, is its colour. So um, I did consider getting an original Poke 2, but there's there's not really any point. It doesn't doesn't replace this. It has slightly better whites and that's it. So if you can deal with the fact that the whites are a little bit darker, a little bit more grey, a little bit more chartreuse, then you may as well just use this. And the fact that its colour is awesome. You can see here, got a got a comic up. Now I tend to read comics in um, in landscape mode. I turn it sideways and you know then divide the page in two. Uh, and that means you can read the text better but not always, you know. Um, the text here is quite small, but with my glasses on, I can I can read it perfectly fine. I often read comics like this. Manga would obviously fit on this very nicely, uh, being smaller than than a standard comic. And uh, even though the colours aren't um, aren't as saturated as they could be if they gave us saturation options, if they gave us a um, an e-reader application. That gave us that menu to adjust the colours, then uh, then they could be better. But the colours are still there. <laughs> that reminds me of a Jim Jeffrey joke about studs and sluts. Anyway, the colours are there, and that's the important thing. They may not be as good as they could be, but they're there, and that's that's why I why I love this device. Um, they're still quite good. And uh, as I showed you earlier, and as I will show you in the comparison that I do later, the colours are better than the previous generation. Slightly, but but they are better. Uh, the next reason why I like this device so much is because it's bloody fast. It's got a very fast octa-core processor with two gigabytes of RAM, which for a tiny e-reader is just incredible. I can't think of any other device this size that I have which is as fast as this is. So, with the exception of the screen, which appears to be quite unresponsive, the, the, sorry, the touch screen, I mean, which appears to be quite unresponsive, it's a very fast device, which means that it can do, um, it can do almost anything, and that, that too is because it's an Android device with Google Play, which uh, blows any Hisense device out of the water. Not only that, not only does it have Google Play, it also has its own books app store where I'm not sure how they've done it, but they've optimized a lot of apps to work better on e-ink. For example, they've modified the Amazon Kindle app to get rid of page turn animations. So normally when you turn the page in the Kindle app, not on an actual Kindle, but in the app on an Android, then you see the page sort of swoop by. but Somehow they've managed to cut those out, which, uh, you know, is quite quite good. Now, onto the front light. Um, oh, bugger. Onto the front light. That is also a bonus, because although it's a little bit annoying that you have to put the front light on, and it does sort of blue the image out a bit, if you turn it all the way up, it does whiten the image. Uh, particularly the um, <laughs> particularly the uh, I've forgotten what I was going to say the whites 
the the whites, the background, the, the sort of chartreuse color that it normally is, goes away. The blue kind of counteracts the um, the greeniness of it uh, a little bit, but. You do sort of notice, obviously, because it's it's a it's a blueish light rather than a than a warm light. You do sort of notice that the uh, the color is slightly bluish, and it's difficult to show actually when I'm when I'm doing this. It just sort of whites out my camera, which obviously shows how bright it can go. Um, uh, let me try and turn it down a little bit, just just enough that you can see the difference. There we go. Okay, so let's see if you can notice the difference. Not sure though. Um, ah, let's use the remote for this. The remote that only works for certain functions. And nope, you can't tell the difference. Okay, the the light that I'm using in the background to to light up the display is far too bright for you to notice the front light. But it's a very very bright front light, um, which also means that for some reason the the lower setting is still quite bright which means if i'm lying in bed trying to read and uh, my girlfriend is asleep next to me it can often disturb her because even on the lower settings even on the lower setting it's very very bright now even though color e ink is uh, is even though color e ink is darker than uh, black and white e ink it's still daylight readable. So if you're in a in a normal day, it doesn't have to be a bright day. It can be a cloudy day. I don't have the front light on usually. If I'm sitting in the train, I can still read it just without the front light. And then obviously at night, you would use a front light anyway. So the 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 big difference between it and uh, black and white e ink is not really enough to put me off uh, because it's it's still perfectly usable. As you can see, I haven't got the front light on right now, and yes, I have a quite a bright light shining on it, but it's perfectly readable, and it has colour, as I keep saying. Um, the small size, the small screen is something I complained about, obviously. I'd much rather have a large screen colour e-reader, but I still want this. I still like this for the fact that it's so damn portable. It's a really tiny device. Onyx Books on their website claims that their poke range is the smallest e-reader available in the world. I don't know if that's true, but it is really small. So let's do a comparison. This is a this is the um, Kobo Mini, which is a favourite of mine because of its size. It's it's tiny. It's a five-inch screen, so it's smaller than the six-inch screen, but actually. The size difference isn't that big. The width is almost the same. And the height is a little bit smaller. It's about a centimetre and a half smaller. But the the thickness of it, this is maybe even half the thickness of the Kobo Mini. So when you, you add all that together, you get a device that is as portable, if not more portable than the Kobo Mini, especially with its case, I find that the Kobo Mini is quite big in the pocket, and yet this fits very, very nicely. So I always have this on me. I always have it in my pocket, um, and it has replaced my Kobo Mini as my daily driver, as people like to say. So yeah, the small size makes it uh, a lovely device to take with you every day. Something that's never bothered me. But which bothers a lot of people is USB charging with USB-C. This has USB-C, so if that's something that gets you excited, then um, yeah, it has USB-C. I don't know, I don't know why that excites you so much. I really don't mind micro USB. Um, I have an iPhone, so I've already got two cables. Adding another one isn't so much of a bother, but. Yeah, if you really, really love USB-C charging and you want to send those book files over a nanosecond faster, then go you. Go you. <laughs> right, so it, it does last less time than a um, an equivalent e-reader without a front light would last, but I think that's actually normal for modern e-readers. Every 
Every 6-inch e-reader nowadays has a front light anyway and people use them extensively and that is going to drain your battery life whether you've got colour e-ink or not. The fact that the screen is slightly darker does mean that you're probably going to want to use the front light more often. But it's still better than an LCD display. The, the display is nicer to look at and I get four to six days out of a charge with heavy use and by heavy use I mean that I'm reading four hours a day maybe on, on a lot of days. I use this a lot. I, I go to bed and I lie there for two hours reading every night and I'm using it throughout the day whenever I'm um, whenever I'm out and about, whenever I'm waiting for something. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting there reading it so all in all I probably use it for four hours a day and I can get up to five days out of it. Um, I do charge it uh, when it gets low, so maybe it would even last longer. I think I charge it when it gets to about 30% or so. So you could probably go a week or more with this, especially if you don't use the front light, especially if you're using external light. So in summer, it's going to last just as long as, uh, as any normal uh, black and white e-reader if you don't turn the front light on. Um, that's it. That's that's everything I've, I've got to say about it, to be honest. Um, it's become my daily e-reader. It's the e-reader e I use it all the time, despite the darker screen. Uh, when you combine the, the practicality of the small size with the, the flexibility of having a colour display, and the fact that it's just such a powerful processor and it runs all the Google apps that I'd want to run, combine all that and it, it blows the pocketbook colour out the water and it makes it a useful device where any of the downsides, as annoying as some of them can be, any of the downsides are completely outweighed by the positives. So if you have a chance to get one of these, uh, I, I would get it, even with the smaller screen. Even if you're thinking that you're waiting for a larger e-reader, I, I still think that you should you should probably get one of these. They're, they, are, they are great. They're brilliant. I love them. And... Um, you know, you can take it out and about, you can read comics, um, either as I do, like this, or with uh, turning it sideways and um, reading it in uh, in a landscape mode with the page divided into two or three parts. It works, and, and there are other apps that you can use as well. So if you don't like the Neo Reader, which is this one that is, comes default, and I use it just because I like the, the library settings here, the library being here with Neo Reader, but you've got all these other apps you can download. I've got Acrobat here, so sometimes I read a document in that if I want to scroll up and down very quickly. You've got the Kindle app, um, Comic Time. You can download anything that is available on Android, so yeah. So, oh, one last thing. Because because of the ability to run it, come on, in A2 mode, it's even fast enough to run some games. So look at this. This is Among Us on a colour e-ink screen. And it works. It runs. It takes a while to load. There we go. La 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 la. So when you're running it in this mode, it is a little bit um, less saturated because it's trying to do everything a little bit quicker. But look at that! Look at the look at the little look at the spinning man! Look at this one! Look at it go! Look how quick that is! That is that is impressive for an e-ink screen. And as I said, you can you can play a game. Yeah, let's uh, let's go for this one. Go on, in we go. In we go. Look, and I'm running around. Okay, you have to press the screen a little bit hard because, uh, as I said, it's not the most responsive screen. But look, it's it's running. It's running a game. There is a tiny bit of stutter and a tiny bit of ghosting. And it appears to be, you know, flashing almost. But look at that. Here we go. Let's go to the map. Let's uh, go to navigation. And it's, uh... now oh, there it is. Let's do a task. It works if you, if you really, really want to play Among Us on a um, e-ink screen with no speakers. Go nuts. Do this. Obviously, if you try and play it on a black and white screen, you're gonna have difficulty identifying uh, who you've seen. 
killing other crewmates, but uh, yeah, you can do it on this, and it, it works. Just look at that. I am, I am impressed. I am absolutely impressed with that. Right there we go. That's uh, that's the end of the review. Despite all of the negatives, and despite Onyx Books being a company that has terrible custom service, they make brilliant devices. And I think you should buy one.